Hi, everyone. This is the voice behind the noise. And I am Myron. South Korea has gone through presidential election this year, a lot has changed this year, and more is about to come in the following years, this is for sure. The former president's leaving office and the change of president has kept people concerned, especially the neighboring countries. So what are they concerned about? On March 9, the newly elected South Korean president clearly expressed his pro-US, Latin American and Japanese stance to enhance South Korea's national security, sending a strong signal to the outside world. Earlier, he published an article in the American magazine Foreign Affairs and also proposed to promote the THAAD anti-missile defense. System Plan Recently, many observers can't help but worry, will this policy shift push Northeast Asia into the Russian-Ukrainian quagmire? Will it further complicate the deadlock situation on the Korean peninsula and pose a direct threat to the security of neighboring countries? So how did this tension start? On the afternoon of March 24, according to the South Korean Joint Staff Headquarters, the North Korean missile launched into the eastern waters of the peninsula on the same day was suspected to be an intercontinental ballistic missile with a flight altitude of more than 6,200 kilometers. After North Korea's launch, South Korean President Moon Jae-in chaired an emergency meeting of the National Security Council at the Blue House. Moon Jae-in said North Korea's launch violated its commitments to the international community. According to Yonhap News Agency, Moon Jae-in emphasized at the meeting that North Korea's launch not only posed a serious threat to the peninsula, the region, and even the international community, but also clearly violated the resolutions of the United Nations Security Council, expressing strong condemnation for this. From 7.20 a.m. to 8.20 a.m. local time on March 20, the North Korean side launched four artillery fires from the area of South Pyongan to the western waters. The Blue House of the South Korean Presidential Office issued a notice on the 20th saying that the South Korean National Security Conference held an emergency subministers meeting that morning. The participants decided to conduct a precise analysis of the projectiles launched by the DPRK under the close cooperation between the ROK and the United States. Participants also emphasized that a high alert posture will be maintained to avoid security gaps during periods of government transition. Although the current situation isn't so serious that will break out war immediately, but attention should be paid to it. Although there is a saying in international politics that emphasizes interests, national power is everything in international relations, but due to the confrontation between the United States and the Soviet Union in the Cold War and the development of new media, the proportion of small countries counteracting big countries in the past few decades has increased. Because small countries' national strength is not comparable to others, they have to choose to unite and use votes to stifle the actions of big countries, while big countries sometimes have to cooperate or exchange interests with small countries, otherwise it is easy to lose control over the international situation. The Korean peninsula is located between China, Japan, and Russia and some other powerful countries geographically. Its foreign policy has long been swaying between doing great things and balanced diplomacy, reflecting the repeated struggle between the dependence of major powers and the independence of diplomacy. This is the reality of Korea. Although after the Korean War, South Korea managed to cultivate its national strength and avoid the fate of being sacrificed as a pawn by the United States at any time, but with the rising risk of North Korea's nuclear weapons, the military alliance between South Korea and the United States not only did not end, but went beyond the offensive and defensive scope of the Korean peninsula and became the United States. One of the important pillars of the Asia-Pacific rebalancing strategy. To this day, Asian countries are still playing games within the post-Cold War framework, trying to regain the right to speak, or using nationalism to weaken the political and economic power of Europe and the United States in their own countries, but they have never been able to get rid of the influence of the United States, which lays a hidden danger for the stability and peace of Asian countries. The author believes that the inter-Korean issue is an old geopolitical issue in Northeast Asia, but in the current new situation of multilateral diplomacy, its capricious changes may also have a significant impact on new political fission and order transformation. So how to solve such a crisis? There is an old saying in China that cures the root cause and corrects the root cause. The root of the Korean Peninsula issue lies in the fact that the external security threats faced by the DPRK have not been eliminated for a long time and the DPRK's legitimate security concerns have never been resolved. The North and South regimes on the Korean Peninsula are still within the framework of binary confrontation and have not yet stepped out of the Cold War pattern. It is precisely because of the risk of North Korea's nuclear possession that the military alliance between South Korea and the United States has not ended. Under the protection of the United States, South Korea's military pressure is relatively small. 
It actively upgrades its industries, reduces its economic dependence on the United States, and becomes a major economic power with information-based high-tech industries. It also uses the advantages of small country diplomacy to actively develop with neighboring countries. Relationship To resolve the Korean Peninsula issue, all parties need to meet each other halfway. The United States recently publicly stated that it has no hostility towards the DPRK and is willing to solve the problem through diplomatic means. Where the situation will go in the next step depends to a large extent on what the U.S. does, whether it takes concrete actions to solve the problem or continues to use the peninsula issue as a geostrategic bargaining chip. In a situation where the DPRK and the ROK compete with each other, the United States, Russia, and Japan are not willing to see the conflict or peaceful reunification of the DPRK and the ROK, otherwise the U.S. forces will withdraw from Asia, and the power structure in Asia will also be out of balance. The future direction of the Korean Peninsula is indeed not very clear. Okay, that's all for today, see you in the next video.